What's up guys? So today I wanted to give you some quick strategy tips on evaluations. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you a strategy on how to go about learning your materials properly. Um, and let me firstly explain exactly why that's important and why it's going to help you as a perfumer. You've got to understand that in perfumery there are basically three main stages. Um, firstly, there's learning the ingredients. Secondly, there's learning to make accords. And then thirdly, once you've got those, you can finally start to make a perfume. So these basically are the three key stages at where you want to focus your learning. And the thing is, you always want to start with the ingredients because you're not going to be able to make any decent accords without knowing the ingredients first. Um, and then also, you know, in order to make a perfume, you're going to want to know how to make the accords that go in it. So you want to build your knowledge up one step at a time. So the reason that learning the ingredients is so important is because if you want to make an accord, um, if you don't know the ingredients, you're basically stumbling around in the dark. So let's say you want to make something like a rose, okay? So in order to do that, you're going to have to know um, various different aroma chemicals that go into a rose. And it might not be a rose, it could be a, it could be a fantasy accord, like a shipra or something else you've made up entirely. Maybe you want to make the smell of a marshmallow. So in that case, you're probably going to have to know a lot about things like um, different kinds of maltol um, or vanillas, that kind of thing. But the point is, it doesn't matter what you want to make. Um, if you don't know your ingredients well to begin with, you're going you're gonna to be just completely stumbling around when you're making the accords. So what you've got to understand is that the basics um, of the ingredients, for example, how long they last and how the character changes over time, um, and also how concentration affects and this kind of stuff um, it still occurs in the accords the only difference between the accords and the ingredients are the accords are a lot more complex so basically yeah with no understanding of the ingredients first you have no chance of making the accords with intention and you know have also have no chance of making them efficiently which is definitely what you want to do right you don't want to be making thousands of trials just to get one thing smelling right but if you've got all of the ingredients, the knowledge of that um, really well in your head in the first place, you're not going to have to do anywhere near as many trials in order to pull off a good accord. And it's not just me um, who would say this. Um, if you go and look at Givaudan, which has the best perfumery school in the world, they actually spend the whole first year just learning the ingredients. So if you're a student there, I think you are meant to learn something in the region of 2000 ingredients but they don't do any blending or make any accords until the second year so they spend the whole year on that eight hours a day so what i'm trying to say for you guys is that you re it's really important if you want to cut if you want to save time in the long run then you've got to go and just learn the ingredients first because otherwise these professional companies wouldn't be doing it this way and if you are desperate to go and start learning some accords then that's fine too you don't have to learn loads and loads of ingredients you don't have to learn 2000 you don't even have to learn 200 you could you could honestly get away with just learning say 20 ingredients really really well and then using that to start making accords out of and you can always obviously learn more ingredients later and expand your olfactory library. So what I would recommend is you pick a odor group that you like. Maybe you like florals, maybe you like greens, or maybe you like woody or something like that. Or pick the right kind of um, odors that go into an accord. Um, so say you, say you loved, as I said before, marshmallows is one example of an accord. Say you were to get a load of vanillas and sweet aroma chemicals and then just get very, very specific on that and become an expert in just that small area, then what you can do is learn those ingredients and then start making that accord and become a master at it. And then, you can, then you've can then you got an accord down, right? And then you can go and expand out to new areas. So how are we gonna learn these ingredients, right? That is the key question. Um, and you can approach it in a number of different ways, um, but I think it's definitely good to be quite methodical about it. And what you've got to understand is that there are lots of different variables, even for the same material, that can affect um, what you actually smell. What I'm going to focus on, I think, are the two main ones, which are concentration and time. Um, so concentration, obviously, is super important um, because you've got to think of it as in every ingredient in the final perfume has some kind of concentration. 
So if you know what the ingredient is like and how it behaves at that concentration on its own, it's going to help you a lot knowing how it might then interact with others in the accord or the perfume. Because if you're already aware of its baseline of how it behaves, then all you've got to worry about on top of that now is the interactions with the other things. So that makes the process of blending way, way easier because you already know most of what's going on. It's just now the extra little tweaks you're looking for. Um, so concentration, that's one thing, but also time obviously is really important because we all know that we've got top, mid and bass notes and we know that the top notes are gonna go quite quickly and the bass notes are gonna last the longest. And obviously when we've got a perfume, um, obviously some of the ingredients are gonna go quickly and some are gonna stick around a long time. So it would be crazy to try to construct some kind of perfume or accord without knowing if our ingredients write uh, top or mid or bass notes or that kind of thing. So here's what I propose. I propose we're gonna take each ingredient and we're gonna test it at different concentrations and different times. So you can kind of construct this, this graph if you wanna visualize it like this. Um, but basically what that's doing is that's mapping out the ingredient so you get a complete picture of it. We can ignore the other smaller factors like the temperature and all that stuff. Um, if you wanted to get really deep, you could explore it, but for a generic picture, this is going to be fine. Probably, to be honest, more than most people look at already. So that's great. It's going to give you an advantage. Um, so we take this and we think we're going to do concentration and we're going to do time. So I'm going to show you a method of how I'm going to do this in practice. Um, so I found this one aroma chemical called Piamosa, I think that's how you say it, um, but it turns out I haven't actually diluted that yet, so I thought it'd be a good chance to use this video to show exactly how I'm doing this. So I've got the pure aroma chemical, which is pretty, pretty much no good for evaluation on its own because it's way too strong, probably going to cause some olfactory fatigue. Um, I covered this in a previous video, so I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. But, so yeah, the first step is we want to dilute it, but we don't just want to dilute it once. We want to dilute it to some different concentrations so we can get the complete picture. So here I am on the scales and I'm weighing, I'm weighing it out and I'm diluting it to 10% and then I'm taking some of that and diluting it down to 1%, taking some of that and diluting it down to 0.1%. Um, so that's the dilutions done. So that's one axis on our graph. Then the second is the time. And that's going to be basically how long we leave it on the scent strip before we take our evaluation. So what I've done is I've taken a notebook and I've made a grid. So we're going to do one um, set of rows for each concentration and then we're going to use the columns for the time. So what's great about this method is we can take one scent strip and then we can basically get all of the times obviously by just evaluating the same sense strip at different time intervals so what I'm going to do here is label three sense strips um, this is really important that you label it because obviously when you're leaving stuff for maybe a week or so um, it's you're not going to remember what it is um, especially if the smell is gone or really faint so we're gonna label it with the name, the concentration, and the date, um, and also the time. And that's gonna be the time at which you dip it. When you're about to do the, the dipping of the strip, write the time a minute or so from now, and then wait for that time and then dip it. And then you know that it's gonna be fully accurate. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm dipping three of the same aroma chemical at once. This isn't um, actually a good practice because obviously the the most the strongest one is going to overwhelm the strength of the weakest one so ideally we would do these on separate days um, but now i've done that so i'll dip it in and i'll do my first evaluation at two minutes after that i'll do another one at 15 minutes three hours one day and 11 days you don't have to do the same scale as me but this is just the one i like to use so yeah that's pretty much all i do um, i've got some other pages here you can see these are some of the evaluations i've done in the past um, and by doing this, just do a few repetitions for each, each one and eventually you're going to build up in your mind a really good picture of exactly how all of the ingredients behave. Um, there are also some games that you can do, so things like covering up the bottles and then smelling and try to guess what they are. Maybe I'll do a future video on that, but roughly this, this kind of thing is going to get you most of the way there with your ingredients. 
um, and then once obviously you've done that you can start get to work on the accords and like you can start learning those kind of things yeah I think I will do a video soon on some accords because you know it's probably more interesting to watch but I honestly have to say if you want to get good at perfumery just learn the ingredients okay just do that because that's that's as I said before there are three steps the ingredients the accords and the perfume so if you've got the ingredients that's like the easy step right just get that done just do that because then you're just causing as least hassle the next steps um, as possible. As I say, pick um, a certain group of um, odors if you want, like pick one area that you wanna just become an expert on. Um, maybe look at it as a challenge. Get 20 ingredients of one type that maybe that could make up one accord or you hope could make up an accord. And then set it as your challenge to learn those 20 really well. And then once you know them really well, then try to make an accord out of that. Um, so yeah. That's all i got to say about this stuff. Um, hopefully you guys can find this method useful. Uh, so that's it. And if you like this video, please um, subscribe and like and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. See ya.